Hello, my name is Deanna Dupuis and I'm a comprehensive planner and a member of the Energizer Neighborhoods team with the City of Boise. And I'm excited to be here to talk to you about how to conduct a SWOT analysis. Um, and why I'm particularly excited about this is because we, I am a neighborhood planner and as a part of a neighborhood plan, we always conduct a neighborhood SWOT analysis. I have the opportunity to work with many different folks across the city to hear what they believe to be the strengths, the opportunities, and the challenges facing their neighborhood. From there, we take that information and um, use it to formulate a vision, set of goals, and action plan for a neighborhood plan. Neighborhood plans usually take about 12 months, um, so they're a pretty long process, and we always start with that learn phase to learn about what's on the ground with the neighborhood and how can we vision and create uh, a, a city, you know, a neighborhood that will work for everyone. Um, and from there, you know, we finally finalize this document that becomes a policy for the city. Uh, however, those do take tw typically 12 months, so they are long. Plan is finished, it serves as a communication link. It links the city to the community so that we're speaking the same language and that we all are on the same page about understanding you know, the opportunities and the challenges facing neighborhoods. Once we've created and identified those uh, details, the neighborhood plan will also serve as a recommendation, um, documenting what the neighborhood believes would be you know, their recommendation to decision makers. Uh, it also serves as a baseline. So as part of the neighborhood plan process, we do conduct you know, what we call existing conditions. What is the neighborhood like today? How many people live there? What's the housing on the ground look like, et cetera? Um, and so we use that as a baseline to be able to track progress. And finally, it gives us a clear project list. What does the neighborhood want to get accomplished in you know, this many years? So neighborhood plans are very, very useful. Um, however, like I said, they do take a year and um, you know, if we were to, we have 34 registered neighborhood associations and we loop, um, group those areas into what we call planning areas and we have an 11 planning areas. If we were to complete one to two neighborhood plans a year, that would take us almost 11 years for every neighborhood to have an updated neighborhood plan. By the time we've gone through every neighborhood planning area, it might be time to start over again. So we're giving, so we've created a plan priority uh, index, and this index helps us strategize where, as the city, we're going to work with our neighborhoods to create neighborhood plans. Um, and we've done that by looking at different indicators around livability, investment, policy, the economy, and neighborhood change. Um, from there, we've been able to find, you know, where are our highest priority areas. But that does not mean that a neighborhood should not be organizing and preparing for a neighborhood plan. Now, being able to have a plan is really important for neighborhoods and um, it's a great way to be able to strategize your thinking. So we've proposed several different ways that neighborhoods can prepare for a neighborhood plan, you know, ranging from most simple to just to organize, get to know your neighbors, attend neighborhood meetings, um, to participate, which is what you're doing today. Attend our educational events, attend um, planning and zoning commission meetings, learn more about the city and get involved in the civic things that are going on. Uh, once you become to organize and you're familiar with what the city does, it's best to listen and learn from your neighborhood members. Host, you know, what we call them listening sessions at your neighborhood association meetings. Perhaps you could, um, you know, have a listening session. Hear what are the issues that are most important to the neighborhood. Learn about what is the neighborhood strengths? What do what are some challenges that neighborhood members are facing? And what we're really going to be talking about today is this analyze and document. So once you've cre done those, you know, preliminary organize and participate and listen, uh, you can actually then begin to analyze some of that information you've heard and document that so that when we begin our neighborhood plan process in your neighborhood, uh, we'll be ready to hit the ground running. And one of those ways to analyze all this information you're hearing is through a SWOT analysis. And it's a technique that's been allowed around for a long time and it's actually used most commonly in businesses. Um, but it's a technique to analyze the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats of a decision, goal, problem, place or organization. So it's just a really great way to organize your thinking um, and give you a path to have some concrete action. Typically, we think of the uh, SWOT analysis as fitting within this timeline. 
A neighborhood organization will have a mission or vision, which typically is just to serve the neighborhood. Uh, and then you know, you'll start to articulate some goals. What are the things you would like to achieve as part of a neighborhood association or organization? And that's really where you're going to take and do your SWOT analysis, um, because we're going to understand you know, what, what are our strengths or what are the things that are going to help us achieve our goals. And once we have all that information and we've organized our thinking, it will make it easier for you to pull out strategies to create a concrete action. So a SWOT analysis helps to understand a goal and identify strategies that are unique to the organization. So we will start with a goal. Here are just some examples of goals that are or that organizations may want to achieve. When we're working with a neighborhood plan, our goal always is how can we improve quality of life for our neighbors? Uh, there's a lot of different types of goals you could have. You know, a common one these days has been how do we connect with our neighbors despite the COVID-19 pandemic? Um, we often hear, how do we improve neighborhood walkability? Or how can we engage voices that don't typically participate? These are all relevant goals and they're a great way to start your thinking around a SWOT analysis. So, you know, kind of, so once you have that goal, we're going to orient our, our thinking in terms of strengths, which are the characteristics that give an organization an advantage. Our weaknesses, what, what are the characteristics that place the organization at a disadvantage compared to others? Opportunities, which are elements that the project could leverage to their advantage. And then threats, elements that could cause harm or trouble. You think of this as our internal, which is your strength. So what are the things or the characteristics about your organization or your neighborhood? Those are internal where your opportunities and your threats are external. How can we learn more about those or how can we increase our connection with those opportunities or threats? Threats could also be seen as you know, challenges. What are opportunities that are challenges that we're gonna have to navigate? Uh, so strengths and opportunities typically are helpful while weaknesses and threats can be harmful for achieving our goal. So um, just if we were to bullet point these strengths are the abilities or skills that your organization has. Um, if we're trying to improve quality of life, often the resources would kind of fall in there. Um, the neighborhood has great sidewalks, right? That's a strength or um, the neighborhood has members who understand planning and zoning well. That's knowledge. That's a strength to the organization. Our weaknesses are things that we need, you know, and it doesn't mean that you can't get them. You just don't have them now or things that are limited. Uh, the weaknesses for a neighborhood organization might be people are busy. Everyone's volunteers. That's a weakness, but it's not impossible. It's just a limitation at that moment. Opportunities, so you could look towards positive trends. Are you seeing greater participation rates in your neighborhood association meetings? Um, has everyone been attending trainings, right? These are opportunities we can get um, to help us improve to achieve our goals. And then our threats are just some risk, um, especially with a neighborhood organization, some changing circumstances. Are people moving out? Are you, um, did school start and people are busy because their kids are at school? Those are all different uh, threats that could be challenging to achieve your goal. Uh, once we start, a neighborhood SWOT analysis is helpful to have some good information or resources to inform that analysis. Ex we call that in the planning world existing conditions research. So what do we have on the ground? And we usually look at some data. We could get demographic data about how many people live in our neighborhood, how many housing units, uh, what are some transportation facts? Do we have more bus routes? Do we have less bus routes? Things like that. You could also complete an asset mapping activity and this helps to identify expertise, network, relationships in your neighborhood. And then you can also create a photo vision book. So it's really helpful to have concrete examples of opportunity areas or um, challenging areas. And so once you've been able to identify those physical assets, this helps you to inform um, the conversation moving forward. So at the city, we've actually created a number of resources to help improve um, 
your SWOT analysis and allow you to do some of this work on your own, but while you're waiting for a neighborhood plan. Uh, we have what we call our neighborhood association data on the next. So uh, it's neighborhoods for each neighbor, or it's a spread for each neighborhood association that provides you know, pretty good snapshot of what is in the neighborhood today. And you can find this on our website. Um, we also have some information about asset mapping. So that's these are just some steps to create an asset map, and we have that information on the Energize website as well. But it really starts with just identifying what are the things within your neighborhood that you can leverage. What, you know, do you have schools, parks, libraries? Do you know someone who works for a large company? Are they on your the board of your neighborhood association where that company may be able to donate time or resources to help you achieve your goal? And it's always helpful to document this so that you can share this with other uh, folks in your network. And then you can create um, a photo vision book. Uh, this has been something we're really excited about and would love to have neighborhoods work on while they're waiting for their neighborhood association to or their neighborhood to have a plan. Um, it's where you could walk around your neighborhood with yourself, your family, your groups and identify areas, you know, current conditions and identify if you love it. You know, is this an interesting building? Is this a great gathering space or are these areas that need some improvement some love um, could we do a yeah you know, what would really benefit from here some landscaping um, and taking those photos and then finding kind of what you would hope the vision would look like into the future uh, you could put these all in a microsoft word document or a powerpoint with captions underneath these are just some examples on the slide here but um, it's a great way just to see your neighborhood and really identify those strengths and opportunities um, and you can even use Google Maps to or Google Street View if you don't want to leave your house. So I'm going to walk you through an example um, strengths of a SWOT analysis, and it's pretty simple and it's a great way just to organize, like we've said, organize your thinking. Um, so, yeah, if we were to connect, if our goal was to connect with neighborhood neighbors during COVID, there's that we have, we're thinking of ourselves as a neighborhood association. What are some of the strengths that we have? Um, and I've already kind of filled this out, but one of the best strengths is you have funding through the city's uh, Energize program, a mini grant fund. Now, in my neighborhood, we have a park, we have large front yards, so we could be able to socially distance. There's a school in my neighborhood. Um, and there's local businesses and we have a well-established social media. These are all strengths or resources or skills that we already have within our organization. Um, some opportunities that COVID presents and that we could help connect with our neighborhoods. Um, you know, I'm seeing people walking back and forth in front of my house more often than normal because people are home. There is some large high visibility corridors in my neighborhood, so potentially we could use those to capture people's attention and connect with them. Uh, I'm realizing that there's potential organizations, especially on those corridor, corridors that we haven't interacted with. Um, you know, schools are becoming really important because they're virtual. Now that communication has really uh, been exploding uh, because of you know, the challenges around that. So maybe we could partner with some of them. Everyone's struggling, so could we bring some organizations together? Um, and then kids are at home. That's You'll see I have that under a threat, but it's also could be an opportunity. You know, kids are at home, so maybe we could leverage something for kids to do. You know, parents are looking for interesting ways to engage and educate their children. That could be an opportunity. Um, but then, you know, COVID is really presenting some serious challenges and, you know, it's making it hard for organizations to adapt and change. I think the biggest one we've been seeing is um, that there, we have limited access to email or communication. A, either not everyone has technology or um, we don't have a way to communicate with everyone on their own networks. That's that's a demonstrated weakness. Um, and, you know, it's just that hard part of not being able to connect with people in person. Can't knock on the doors. Um, we also have threats. Um, some potential threats would be, you know, people aren't responding to our communications. We can't control that, so we're trying to address to that. Um, folks are really struggling. Um, you know, people may be losing their jobs. 
um, or they have other priorities. You know, they got to educate their kids or they're really concerned about taking care of an, uh, a family member who might be a vulnerable population. Um, and again, the threat that kids are at home. So these are just some potential ways to organize your thinking. And then you would look at this and say, OK, well, what are the things that make our what can we leverage to make it so that we have a clear strategy on how to move forward? So once you have your SWOT analysis built out, you would then be able to take those strengths, opportunities, weaknesses and threats and turn them into strategies. So um, we're able to leverage our mini grant funds through Energize. And while we don't have everyone emails yet, maybe we could figure out a way to beef up our email list. And maybe that's reaching out to existing PTA organizations and asking how are they communicating? Can we communicate together? Um, and then we could also use this strategy. So once we have those strategies, we could create an action plan to implement and really help us move us forward and make sure we're using the resources to our best of our ability. Uh, and so that really sums it up. That's a quick how to conduct a neighborhood SWOT analysis. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out.